couple versions of Hornady's Superformance, some Winchester, and some Federal 130 grain Sierra Game King. We're going to try them through two different rifles today, whether it be Vanguard and also a Savage AccuStock, both in 270 Winchester. If you hear some noise in the background, that's, uh, that's the car with the air conditioning going so the dog can enjoy the air conditioned comfort. He prefers it that way. We'll start out with a Weatherby. As you can see, I've mounted a Citron Big Sky 3x9x42 scope, an excellent scope. And we're going to take a few shots just to make sure we're on the paper at uh, 26 yards. We'll do our course adjustments, repeat with the Savage, and then we'll, we'll move the target back out. Here's our first two spotter shots for the Weatherby, so it's no problem. Move things up about four inches, and we should be on the paper at 100 yards. So we'll, we'll repeat with the Savage and go from there. Here's our stainless steel Savage, AccuStock. You can see we've got all the original factory stickers on it, including the hang tags. We've just mounted a Bushnell Elite 3200 3x9x40. We should be fine for what we're doing today. Well, we'll take a couple spotter shots with Winchester power points, 150 grain, just the way we did with the Weatherby, and then we'll move things out to 100 yards or so to see uh, see how they compare. As a result of our spotter shots, you can see that even though we mounted fresh scopes, so we're going in essentially blind, both the Weatherby and the Savage did about the same thing, both shooting, uh, both shooting low. So we'll crank up the scopes on both of them and we'll move it out to 100 yards. We've moved up the Citron 36 clicks. See if that keeps us on the paper. Obviously the target's been set back and we're changing ammo. It should shoot a little flatter. This is the Hornady 130 grain Superformance GMX. So we'll give it three shots and see if the Weatherby can produce some semblance of a, of a group. All right, there's the first three shots with the Weatherby. We're obviously on the paper. That's a good thing. We've got uh, two uh, two holes that are acceptably close together and uh, a flyer that's decidedly high. So we'll cover those up. We'll repeat the same procedure with the Savage and see how we do there. Same procedure with the Savage. Same range conditions, obviously. Uh, the same ammo, the Hornady. 130 grain Superformance GMX and the same target. So we'll uh, we'll see how they stack up. Obviously, when you change ammo, you change everything. So, well, with the same ammo, the Savage is obviously a better shooter. We've got uh, not quite the same hole, but about as close as uh, you can hope for. Just cracking off three shots. Uh, one shot low, but uh, the first two shots, bingo, It's that's called one hole. So it's just one type of ammo, it doesn't really matter, you can see the, uh, the three black dots on the, the Weatherby shots, so when we change ammo, it can change everything, but with the Hornady GMX, no question, I mean, Savage is, is the better shooter based on these two example rifles and one type of ammo, so we'll... Uh, We'll try another another brand of ammo. We need to bring that Savage group down a little bit. Anyway. For the B, we're using Federal 130 grain Sierra, boat tail soft point, so totally different brand and bullet style. We're back to the Weatherby. We're gonna take three quick shots, see how it does with the Federal stuff, and repeat with the Savage. A little more respectable job with the Weatherby. We're shooting yeah, just over an inch. We've got two holes right next to each other. So for hunting purposes out to 300 yards, there's not much that can live on the difference considering you've got an 8 to 10 inch kill zone on, on a whitetail on a deer sized animal. So that's uh, certainly good enough to hunt with. Uh, we'll see how the Savage does. But obviously this Weatherby anyway likes the Federal uh, ammo better than the Hornady GMX. But of course, your rifle may find the exact same opposite. Okay, same deal. Same federal ammo with the Savage. We'll load it up, take three quick shots, and see what it does. This time we had the exact opposite result. 
based on the ammo change for the Weatherby shot better than the Savage did with the federal uh, Sierra 130 grain boat tails. So there you go. It's pretty obvious that uh, both the Weatherby and the Savage, along with the recently reviewed Browning Able 3, are more than accurate for any uh, big game hunting application. But ammo makes a difference, so you're going to have to go through five or six different types of ammo to find out uh, what the magic combination is. That's part of the fun of it. So, based on one ammo or the other, you could say the Savage is more accurate, you could say the Weatherby is more accurate. They're both excellent guns, and Weatherby, Savage, and Browning over the last 40, 50 gun reviews, they consistently, uh, in the, the value category anyway, are just terrific shooters. So what's a fair and reasonable way to compare these two rifles? They're both excellent. You have a little bit longer barrel length with the Weatherby. That means slightly higher velocities. I like that. The Weatherby feels better to me, personally, um, primarily because of the Monte Carlo cheek piece. So it fits me better, and it just feels better than the Savage. Uh, they're both essentially equally accurate. It would take many, many different types of ammo to, uh, to come up with the difference. So uh, accuracy isn't an issue with either one. I generally do like a detachable magazine like the Savage has. However, the Weatherby feeds a little bit more smoothly than the Savage. Both have smooth bolts. Um, the roughest bolt of of the three, meaning these two rifles and the Browning AB3, the roughest bolt is the Browning, but uh, with use it's slicked up a little bit. So, a lot of this is personal preference. Uh, neither of these rifles are harsh shooters by any means. 270 Winchester is, is, a, is a fun cartridge and an effective cartridge, but in this case the Savage is softer shooting. A little bit more generous uh, pad there. So. Uh, the, the current recoil pad that Savage is putting on their thermoplastic stock guns is, is very, very good. So, a little softer shooting with the Savage, a little smoother action um, as far as feeding, and a little better ejection on the Weatherby, although there's no problems with either one. So, uh, you do have a better grip surface on the Savage because it's molded in sharp checkering. So it grips your hands better, and that's going to be better in uh, snowy, icy conditions than, uh, than the Weatherby, which is not quite as grippy. So you can make a case for either one, but I'll tell you, they're both excellent, excellent values, excellent rifles, and uh, I think most anybody would be happy with either one of these two. They're just, uh, they're excellent guns, considering they're... Uh, they're not expensive, they're just off the rack guns, nothing special. Bolt on a couple scopes and just poke paper. So for uh, big game hunting, excellent choices, either one.